Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. It is time to discuss what has never happened before in history. It's going on right now, before our very eyes. I will bring all of that to you. But first, I wanted to start by telling a little story. I'm going to walk you through what has been happening and how this is affecting different industries. Inflation and recession fears are squeezing some industries more than others. So if we take this and look at it from different angles, we're going to see a different picture. And that's important because if somebody's in one industry right now, I don't know, maybe they're in agriculture, they are going to feel it different than if they're in, you know, biotech, if they're in, you know, tech stocks to begin with, or, you know, whatever. This is important because each and every individual has their own way to look at all of this data that's coming through. Never take your eye off of this. It is so key to pay attention to everything that could affect you. And I'm going to give you some of that today. Shoppers are feeling the pressure as inflation pushes up prices for gas, groceries, and a range of other goods and services. Airlines, movie theaters, and specialty retailers, not just regular, regular retailers, uh, are among the businesses that so far have been shielded from a slowing economy. That hasn't been the case for companies like Target, who have been trying to get rid of a lot of that excess inventory right now. Other companies like McDonald's are seeing signs that consumer demand is weakening. I have heard from many people saying that they've gone to McDonald's, they've gone to other fast food, and the prices they have paid has been quite significant. In fact, they have a quote here, $20 seems extravagant at this point for lunch. And I've heard higher numbers for very simple meals at fast food. I'm not talking about gourmet. There's always going to be that gold-covered steak. There's always going to be those crazy things that people are paying. We're talking about food that is generally supposed to be seen as cheap. So they talk about this right here, uh, looking at what is considered to be recession-proof, and that is the movie industry, because you know if people can't do something exciting and going out to there and big, you know, big extravagant things, they can always go to a movie. And they can pay that $10, $20, whatever it is. At least they got to have a little bit of fun. We will see, though, if that persists into the next year. Movie tickets aren't that cheap from what I understand. Okay? Consumers continue to trade up, not down. It might seem counterintuitive, but he said the trend is in line with re recent economic downturns. Alcohol sales have been shielded in a part because prices haven't been rising as quickly as prices for other goods. So they go through here. I mean, there's so much, but all I'm trying to, as we move in, all I'm trying to show you is that each industry or each individual, depending on their job or what their business is, is going to be affected very differently. Okay. I hope that explains it. The U.S. recession isn't inevitable, but inflation is unacceptably high, according to your friend. Actually, no, not your friend. My friend, Janet Yellen. Okay, because Janet Yellen, as the Treasury Secretary, has an agenda, let's just say. And she's telling us that we don't have to worry about this recession, but, you know, inflation, they're going to fix that all up. Okay. Let's be honest about inflation. Categories plan to cut back on spending due to inflation. This is basically like, think of this showing us what people are cutting back on first. And that's a simple matter of fact. I'll show you, I'll bring out the highlighter. Dining out, top one, right in here. These are basically different dates as you look through, but they're, they're basically the same for all of these dates. Deliveries and takeout from restaurants, number two. Clothing and footwear, number three. Live entertainment, and so on. So that's important. Because these are the industries, okay, specifically restaurants. They got hit so hard during 2020. And I'll say it, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Robots and automation are coming for this industry. No doubt. They are putting all their efforts and all new capital into automizing, into automation, into robotics. This is happening. Flippy the robot, um, you know, the waiter, no more waiters anymore, no more busboys anymore. You're going to have, you know, you're done with your plates. 
You're going to have the robot that comes to your table. You put your stuff on there. It's gone. It gets sent to the back. No more bus boy needed. Okay. So they're eliminating positions. These are not fancy positions. And guess what? At the high end restaurants, you're not going to see those robots probably. But look at what has happened. Look how far we've come. Deutsche Bank now expects an earlier and somewhat more severe recession. So the initial expectation was end of 2023. But now that has been, you know, basically brought up somewhat. And of course, why? As I mentioned, increasing interest rates. Increasing interest rates creates a problem for these, this world of easy monetary policy, this world of corporations that are fixated on cheap money. Now, those corporations are still borrowing at cheap prices compared to, you know, somebody borrowing on their credit card. But it doesn't get us out of what this reality truly is. If buyers want to pay the same monthly mortgage payment as at the beginning of the year, when rates were about 2.5 percentage points lower, they will need to look for a lower priced home. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Specifically, buyers can afford to buy 25% less expensive homes than at the beginning of this year. So does that mean that prices are effectively going to crash 25%? Not necessarily, but take that information and you do what you want with it. If that's all they, what is a home worth? What is a stock worth? What is anything worth? It's worth what people can afford to pay. That's it. You, you can't look at all comparables. Well, you know what? The last NFT of a frog or whatever it is sold for one million. Therefore, I can buy this thing and it's going to sell for one million. It doesn't work like that. It's based on what somebody is willing to pay. And in that share of buyers, in that pool of buyers, what is it that they can afford at this time? Because your home that you're trying to sell or your home that you're trying to buy, these things have a pool of buyers. What is their situation? Are they doing well? Are they kind of struggling? Have things been moving down? Have they been you know, able to go out to the restaurants and this and that? These are all questions that we could find some of that data on. I've talked about it many times before here and on my second channel, the second channel, if you don't know already, go down to the description, right at the very top of the description. That's my second channel where I give really short tips and little tidbits of information. Uh, so check that out if you haven't already. I'll talk about it on there as well, okay? So people should be aware of what's happening. Let's go into what we have never seen before. Now, I had to get through all that to show you why this is truly important. What we are living through right now is significant. I know some people are just saying, hey, just dollar cost average, it's all good. This is some earth shattering moments that we've been seeing. The in prevalence of selling, this is a market route without equal. Sweeping losses at the S&P 500 at a frequency never seen before. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Nowhere to hide with major assets suffering concerted declines. So this article does have a lot. I want to show you a chart in just a second, but you could see it in five of the seven sessions through Thursday, at least nine in 10 S&P 500 stocks dropped a record run of widespread losses. So the selling is just happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. Retail doesn't really know what's going on. I mean, because of what, what happens with the online influencers, they're kind of just, they're just, putting all their faith into that. Um, but, you know, that's besides the point. Here you can see it in a chart form. This is from Goldman Sachs. Okay, so that orange, or, you know, orangish line here, this is current. This is where we're at. Months after the S&P 500 pre-correction high. So from its high, where are we at right now? We have moved down so fast from that high, from that high point, we have never seen a situation like this in the previous cycles. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, it's just showing you, you know, the, the other, you know, how this has been. But anyway, all I'm trying to highlight here that we have we haven't seen anything like this before. How extreme is that? And many have 
expected that this will simply continue to fall. I personally think that we are overdue for a bounce. Now I can show you that in a second here. Let's take a look really quickly. This is the S&P 500, okay? And you can notice this. This is the peak, I believe, January um, for the S&P. And look what's happened. It falls, we have a bounce. Doesn't go, bounced. We get a new high, barely, just barely, in March, end of March. It doesn't break the previous high, though, that we experienced back in January. And we get another fall. And then another bounce. And then another fall. We have not been able to essentially go to these new levels, new highs. And the indicators are screaming oversold. But yet, the markets are aware of the fundamental changes. And that has namely been increasing interest rates. That's hit right here. 124 global rate hikes in the uh, year 2022. This is important. Many people said, no, this would never happen. This has already happened this year alone. 124 times. Okay? Last year, it was 101 times. But the previous year was only six times. So we can see what's happening year over year. These countries around the world are increasing their rates. So thank you. If you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up. For all those that have stayed this far into the video, the previous two videos, I did some discussion about what I need uh, as, a, as a creator, as a business owner. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put out an official video that's just all about this and essentially that I need somebody that can do video editing. I'm going to put it sort of a job application, I guess you can call it. Somebody who's going to do some really cool video editing, who's going to post all these different things on different social medias, who's going to do all the hashtags, who's going to manage all that so that I don't have to do that, that type of work. I want to spend the time doing the research. I want to spend it doing, you know, what matters instead of, you know, hashtags and all that. I don't care. I don't care about the, th the thumbnails are awesome. Let me tell you, I love doing them and, and that sort of thing, but it just takes so much time. Um, and just posting them here, posting them there, post all that stuff. It's just time, time, time. So I'd rather spend that time doing the research portion than doing the make creating the actual video. Um, so that's that's it. So that's one thing. I would also love somebody to do articles. So I would give that person a whole bunch of data, and then say create articles from this data. You know what I mean? So I want to be the one to strategize what goes in, but somebody who really knows how to write well and who could do it on a daily basis. And like I, you know, I can do all these different things, but there's only so much time in a day. I'm already working seven days. I've been doing that for years. So the point is basically to get these tasks and, and to give them to people who really do it well and can do it well and can do it every day. Um, so that's another thing. These are just other things I've been thinking of. Uh, I'm going to be creating a new course that's coming out that's going to be focused on specifically what to do in a recession, what to do to prosper on the other side of it. So that's going to be a course that's going to come out. Uh, but that's besides the point. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just sharing. I'm just trying to be transparent. And I, and I know I saw your comments in the last video and, and I appreciate all of them. Okay. Thank you very much for being here with me. Uh, you know, at the channel, it's 282 is where it's going to stay. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I don't, you know, whatever. But I, I'm trying to do my best to, you know, keep it going. Okay. So if you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up. If you're not already, you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe to the channel as we go and move on to 282,000 subscribers. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.